Vielen Dank für die Musik und herzlich willkommen to zur all of you for the graduation ceremonies of Friedenshau Adventist University. This year, we are back here in the chapel after we had to be in the arena for the last few years. So it was a different type of uh, feeling. Today, we are back here in a very special room. Dear students and especially dear graduates, dear colleagues, dear relatives and uh, friends, and dear honorable guests from the, um, local politics, we have the uh, we have the mayors of Möckern and uh, Borg, Krüger and Stark, from our church and from our institutions. We have Mr. Proschwitz from the Adventist Welfare Organization and Mr. Hartmann from the Church, Seventh Adventist Church in Germany, and Mario Brito from Bern, who I'm going to introduce a little bit more in a moment. At this time, a few hints. You may know our corona rules, and we would like to invite you to keep distance as far as possible and to use your masks if possible. But when you move around in the room, or especially when you sing at the end of the service, uh, please wear your masks. The language will be, uh, we will be doing the service bilingually, German and English, and there's a translation available in the other language, and perhaps you already received your headsets for it. So channel one, if you can hear me, you're on the right channel. If you are on channel two, change to channel one. This is the high point, the culminating point of the academic year. We have graduates in the bachelor and master's program who have been preparing for this day for years, uh, with years of studies. And uh, they're looking forward to this event, I'm sure. And we are happy to be able to give the diplomas to you and to celebrate together this special occasion. I would like to introduce the speaker for our graduation ceremony today. It is Mario Brito. He is the president of the Seventh Adventist Church in the Inter-European Division. So it's uh, uh, Central and uh, uh, Europe, Central and South Europe. And, uh, he originates in Portugal, has studied in uh, uh, Spain, and France, and in the US. He studied theology. And he worked as a pastor for many years and later in administration in his country. After that, he was at the European uh, level of our church in various responsibilities, and now he is uh, president and uh, also the chair of the board of our university. Marius, we are glad to uh, have you here and let you speak to us today. Welcome. welcome. It's my pleasure to be here this morning to firstly encourage and support the ones that are having the graduation on this day. This is a memorable day for the graduates. You always remember this great day. But we are here all together to tell you that we are here to support you to tell you that we are with you, with the school. There is no graduates without school, without teachers. We also are here to thank the work that this school has been doing throughout the years. I know that is not the time for a long speech, but I'll try to go to essentials. 
Normally, in a speech like this, we try to not only congratulate the ones that are being, uh, going through graduation, but also try to speak about some values. It's important that we study, very important, that we have an academic degree, but we need to have underneath values. Values are very, very important for us in all realms of life. And you know, when you study leadership today, you see how important is who the leader is, not how many information, not how many knowledge he has, but how he relates to each other, to other people, how he relates to the community. So I would say that um, growth is a continuous process. It's interesting to see that the United States they call this ceremony not graduation, but commencement. And people will ask, why commencement? You know, in the Middle Ages, they had the ceremony of initiation. When anyone goes to a university or in a certain profession, it would come to a point where the person would be initiated. The person will start his life. I could, I made some research, but I'm not going to explain all the things, but if you want, I can give you the references. The point is this, in case of the academia, like here, you come to a point where you can also become a master, that you are accept, as accepted in the community of those who teach, of the masters. If it would be a profession, you would be able to work by yourself. You know, you, in the beginning, in the Middle Ages, they didn't have too much universities, a few. But anyone in any realm of life have to be initiated by a master. So in a certain point, we are, you are finishing a certain level, but the good news I want to tell you you don't finish here. Each time you come to a threshold, you have the next one. You finish that one, you have the next one. And I would like to challenge you to think life this way, you know. When you stop growing, you die. Like the trees. We don't like to admit that, you know, but when you have no more dreams, you don't advance. There is a Portuguese poet that says, each time a man dreams, the world jumps and advances. You cannot, without a vision, without aiming at something, go anywhere. We need to always look forward. And as Christians, we look forward even for something better than what we can realize in this world. I would like to mention a few things that are important. Despite aiming at continuous growth that I mentioned, we must be aim humble to recognize that we have certain limitations. None of us know everything. And even if we would, it would take us millions of years to assimilate, to grasp all the information. In the Middle Ages, it was easy for someone in a profession to say I can grasp everything. But today, you go to internet, you see. <laughs> and it's more and more. It's growing, it's vast. So in whatever area you may be specialized, be humble. You will never grasp the whole thing. All of us have our blind spots. We don't see everything regarding ourselves. And if we want to grow, the first step is to try to understand ourselves and to understand the others. Because we quickly judge others. We quickly say, okay, we are the best. This is our default mode, you know. We think that the problem is always with the others. We are not part of the problem. 
I say, try to understand that you don't have all the gifts, you don't have all the knowledge, you have a few, others have a few. When you put your knowledge with the knowledge of others, then you can grow. You know, I like to see flowers, but it's not my strongest point. If the flowers would not be there, maybe I would not notice. <laughs> but I remember some of my assistants, they say, maybe we can put a jar here with some flowers. I say, yes, when the flowers come, I say, it's good. I have no sensitivity for that, but other people have. So just to say, we need each other if we want to grow, especially in the society where the knowledge is so much deep and wide, we need to have specializations. You see, in all domains today, you must be specialized. You cannot have a vague information about things. You need to go deep and pre be precise. We cannot be precise if we are not very specific. So just to say, even if you have your diploma, don't think you know everything. I remember in the graduation in the United States, I had a colleague, he had a PhD in chemistry. And he said, you know, when I came out of college, I think I knew everything. Then I came to the master's level. I saw that uh, I didn't know everything. And also, the others didn't know everything. When I came to my PhD, I realized that I knew nothing. So it's good when we came to that conclusion also that uh, we don't know too much. We have to be humble. And if you are humble, you will grow. Think that you want to grow. Another point, you know, that we have to be aware, you usually tend, tend to be very self-centered. You know, it's like if we are the center of the universe. Everything has to go around us. Be attentive to that. It may betray you. The last point that is a very important, because we are in a Christian school, we believe in the values of the gospel. We believe in the values that Christ has taught us. As I said, human beings have their own limitations. We don't see everything. But there is a God that knows everything. We were created at the image of God. And we are destined to grow forever. And I believe that, you know. I remember one time I was also in a school, invited to have a few words to the students. It happened to be that at the end, I spoke about of a hope of an eternal life. A very important surgeon of that city came to me at the end, he told me, you know, I would like to believe the same as you believe, even if it's not true. Yes, we need to have a hope. I would like to share a quotation with you, a quotation of a speech. I don't know if you ever have read David Foster Wallace. You know, this man writes some interesting things. Reading him, I don't know where he comes from, you know, if he is a believer. I believe he believes in something, but all of us believe in something. The quotation say, says this, because he is something else that is worth to be true, in the day-to-day -day trenches of adult life, there is actually no such thing as atheism. There is no such thing as not worshipping. Everybody worships. The only choice you get is what to worship. 
And the compelling reason, reason for maybe choosing some sort of good or of God or spiritual type of thing, the compelling reason for maybe choosing this type of worship, be Jesus Christ, Allah, Yahweh, Wiccan, Mother Godness, or the Four Noble Truths, or some inviolable set of ethnic, ethical principles, is that pretty much anything else you worship will eat you up alive. If you worship money and things, if they are, uh, let, I, I thought, if you worship money and things, if they are else you worship, you tap real meaning of life. Excuse me, but I have to put the letters a little bit bigger. If you worship money and things, if they are where you tap real meaning of life, then you will never have enough. Never feel you have enough. It's the truth. Worship your body and beauty and sexual allure, and you will not have enough. You always feel ugly. And when time and age start showing, we'll die a million deaths because they finally grieve. They grieve you. On one level, we all know this stuff already. It has been codified as myths, proverbs, cliches, epigrams, parables. The skeleton of every great story, the whole tricky is keeping the truth up, up front in daily conscience. Worship power, and you'll end up feeling weak and afraid. And you'll need even more power over others to numb you to your own fear. Worship your intellect. Being seen as smarts, you will end up feeling stupid, a fraud, always on the verge of being found out. But the insidious thing about these forms of worship is not that they are evil or sinful, it is because they are unconscious. They are default settings. They are kind of worship you just gradually slip into. Day after day, getting more and more selective about what you see and how you measure value without ever being fully aware that that's you are doing. You know, uh, all, us, all of us have to have some reference in life. The main reference is your God. Maybe ideology, Maybe money, maybe food, whatever. But you'll be disappointed. You know, in a certain time of my life, I also had doubts about religion. In fact, I didn't doubt God, but I doubt religions. And I start having some exist exist existential questions until the point that God helped me. God is willing to reveal himself to us. I remember in the beginning of my struggles with the metaphysical dimension, I would say, God, if you exist, help me understand you. God reveals himself to human beings. We cannot understand things that are beyond. We were not there to prove anything. We have the evidences. The evidences is what can build our faith, what can help us grow. And our goal is to reproduce the character of Christ in us. Christ is God incarnated. He came to show us what is the perfect thing. And remember that perfection is always connected to where we are. A child that can speak and walk, if the child is two or three years old, it's okay. And if it doesn't read, it does not read yet, you say, okay, it's a perfect child. When he is seven, if he can read, it's okay, you say it's perfect. In our lives also, you go by stages. 
We will never be gods. But we, our trend is to grow towards that God. But God doesn't force his presence in our lives. He knocks at the door, he says, I invite you, can you relate to me? And if we accept, we will grow. We will contemplate him, we will become like him. In fact, the whole law of God is based in two basic principles. Relational principles. Our relationship with each other and our relationship with God. We were created at the image of God. When we relate to each other, we are learning about God. God is a God plural. The truth is plural. There is no mono channel. The truth comes from different perspectives. Listen attentively to those who are around you. Be attentive how they behave. Be attentive to their knowledge. I wanted to know God. I was praying for that. You know how God revealed himself to me? Through people. People with a lot of patience. I said, wow, I would like to be as patient as this person. Other people, by their wisdom, you learn wisdom from other people. You learn a lot with other people. Be attentive. But remember, all human beings are limited. We have to grow towards the infinite. And this we find it. Jesus came to reveal this infinite God that treats us with respect and love. And he came not as a dictator imposing anything. He came as a servant. You know that today many people, even those who say they are not believers, they are adopting principles of servant leadership. The servant leadership is not the one that comes to you and say, you do that or I'll kill you. And we have many of those around us at all levels of the society. The real leader is the one that is concerned about people, the well-being of people at all levels, in business, all realms of life. And if you leave that experience of aiming to help the others grow, not thinking about ourselves, you will be free from the slavery of your ego. Our ego is terrible. The centeredness in, our, in ourselves. When you no longer think about yourself, but you think about the well-being of the others, it will come back to you as a blessing. This is what Jesus taught us. Think about each other. And when you think about each other, you stimulate people to go the same way. They will not be self-centered. They will think about the well-being of the others. This is the ideal society where everyone is concerned about the well-being of those who are not so gifted or not so rich, not, have not so many blessings. If we go that way, dear graduates, you will succeed. Remember, it's not only knowledge. You may have knowledge, but you may be very difficult relating to other people. How can you have success? You may be, have knowledge, but be greedy, working just for money. You may have any kind of intellectual gifts, but not be able to help anyone. The world needs this type of leaders. I sit in many boards, you can believe me, many, many boards. The most difficult thing today is to find the right leaders. Sometimes we receive curriculums of people that have three, four PhDs. When you pay, ask some information, the people with whom they worked before, they say, no, don't employ this guy. Just to say, you can have 10 PhDs, but if you don't have some specific values, it will be difficult for you to succeed. 
As for myself, I testify of respect the others that may think differently. In Christ, I have found the perfect model. I would like to challenge you to observe him, to see the values that he taught us, how much they are valid for all humanity. May God bless you abundantly. Remember, the world is go forward, up always upwards. Never look behind. Go always forward, humbly, respecting the others, looking for the well-being of others. You will succeed. This is my prayer. From a new student here to you, admirable graduates, I wish you congratulations. And myself and the band pray that the candor that Freedom Cell has instilled in you, you would carry it not just for your professional lives, but to light up the world.
that freedom thou has given Ja, vielen Dank für die Musik und vielen Dank, lieber Mario Thank Brito, you for the music and deine thank you Worte. Mario Brito for your words. And uh, now we come to the highlight of this ceremony, passing on the diplomas and certificates. They will be presented by the deans, uh, the dean for Theology, Alexander Schulz, and for social science, it is Professor Thomas Spiegler who will present the certificates. After that, there will be a few prizes and awards that are presented. The Deutsche Akademische Austauschdienst, the German uh, uh, Academic Exchange Service, who will be given by Professor Spiegler. Then the uh, Friends of Friedens are, the Friends of Friedens are will present a prize. Uh, presented by Dr. Friedegard Fölz and the Walter, Waltraud and Herbert Blumstedt Prize will be presented by Dr. Johannes Hartlapp. So I ask the deans to come to the front. First of all, the dean, Alexander Schulz for theology. Meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, it is a great pleasure for me to present the graduate diplomas for the Faculty of Theology, and I'm doing this in lieu of all the teaching staff in theology who have accompanied you during the years of your studies at Friedensau. And I'm doing this in lieu for all the workers in the academic administration who have not been tired to remind you of uh, handing in uh, your work and reminded us, and were not tired of reminding us, that we pass pass on your grades. So Friedensau will not forget you. There are six students finishing this year, two females, four males, and we start with the Bachelor of our faculty, Bachelor of Arts in Theology, Itje Zepnik is graduating. Itje is going to continue her studies in Friedensau as first female student in the new master's program. Itje. So we continue with the uh, Master of Theological Studies. The MTS, it's an English uh, study, course of study, so the presentation will be in English. Graduating with a Master's in Theological Studies, Marcel Domian. 
in absentia. Graduating with a master's in theological studies, John Opechi. Congratulations, John. Time for picture. <laughs> John will continue his studies here at Friedensau Adventist University in our master's program, International Social Sciences. John Opechi. Abschließend die Graduierenden im deutschsprachigen Masterprogramm des Fachbereichs. So, at the end, we turn back to German again. Uh, the Masters of Theology in German. Master of Arts in Theology. Yuri Zakvatavi, in, uh, graduates in absentia. Mit einem Master of Arts graduiert in Absentia Eliana Dullinger. Eliana Dullinger in Absentia. Mit einem Master of Arts and a Master of Arts in, in Theology. Sean. Normally, it is um, when they, when people graduate in absentia, we don't give explanations. But in this case, I am uh, turning away a little bit from that rule. Sean and Iliana Dullinger, right after defending their master's thesis, went to a social missionary project into the Lebanon, and because of that. Uh, with a heavy heart, Sean they were not able Liliana. to be here. So Sean and Liliana <laughs> Dolina. We congratulate all graduates, male or female, in theology, and welcome you as alumni of the Friedens Adventist University. <laughs> and would like to invite the uh, graduates of the Bachelors of Social Work and Masters of Counseling and the Masters of Music Therapy. is trying to find work in the Leipzig area where she is getting her state recognition, preferably in youth work or with people uh, with uh, handicaps. stationary um, uh, youth work and is getting a state recognition.
Yifeng Li Wilke in Absentia, so for work. Master of Arts in Counseling, Anna Gürmer. Anna is working at a family educational place and is responsible for qualifying uh, people in the area of uh, health and the social work. Daniel Franz in Absentia. That's music therapy now. Master of Arts in Music Therapy, also Sandrina Erdmann in Absentia. Katrin Lipke in Absentia. Claudia is a pastor in Schönebeck at the Baptist Church there and has opened several offices there where she can use her music therapy qualification where it is concrete for other people. Nikolai C. in Absentia. Nikolai in Counseling. And now it's time for our graduates from the Master of Arts International Social Sciences. Please come on stage. Vincent Adumata in absentia. <laughs> Kwame Ajay. <laughs> From the relations. Kwame is currently applying for jobs and has not decided yet where to start. <laughs> Prince Ajiyamang Badu. <laughs> Congratulations. Prince is working as communication and marketing officer with Human Radio in Berlin. This is a network mapping disaster risk communication and social services. And he has some options to continue his work. He's not decided yet which. And he still has, so he told me, his PhD dream. <laughs> All the best. Faisal Ahmed in absentia. <laughs> Emmanuel Azamoa. <laughs> Emmanuel is working in the field of social work with the 
Institut für außerschulisches Lernen und Erlebnispädagogik in Lobeck. Mahame Asamoa. Mom is currently still looking for the right job opportunities. <laughs> Lamot Borgella. <laughs> Lamot works currently at the Jugendwerk Roland Mühle in Burg. Emanuel Fiawango. That's his Glückwunsch. Emanuel lebt in Burg und arbeitet als pädagogischer Mitarbeiter beim Institut für außerschulisches Lernen und Erlebnispädagogik. Richard Foku. Richard is currently working with Tesla Gigafactory near Berlin. Charles Cavoreo in absentia. <laughs> Paulina Kiefhaber in absentia. <laughs> Ananette Manirambo. <laughs> Congratulations, Ananette. Ananet started right now a job in a Jugendhilfeeinrichtung in Berlin, but she is still looking for a right job uh, in the field of humanitarian organizations. <laughs> Joseph Mante. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Joseph will soon start to work with Amnesty International in Berlin. <laughs> Duke Papoa. <laughs> Come with Duke. Duke is still looking for the right job and he would like to work in, in an international humanitarian organization. Yeah. Our dear graduates, for me and on behalf of my colleagues, I can say it was something special to get to know you and to accompany you on your way for a few years. You are the students who will later say, we studied during COVID pandemic. <laughs> we are the ones 
who witnessed the zoomification of academia. <laughs> and maybe your children will ask, why didn't you rebel? <laughs> you experienced unplanned changes. Isolation, quarantine, more self-study time, a closed Stutz, cancelled fun events. Your studying felt definitely different compared to years before. And therefore, together with your certificate, you take away from this university the experience of having managed an uninvited crisis. You found a way to adjust to new situations and to carry on under less favorable conditions. And I hope and wish that you can transform this experience into confidence, into the deep trust to be able to master challenges. We wish you all the best. You are now our alumni, and as such, you're always welcome on the campus here. And therefore, my farewell to you is the German, Auf Wiedersehen, liebe Absolventinnen und Absolventen. Each year, Friends of Adventist University awards the DAD Prize in, on behalf of the German Academic Exchange Service to one of, of its international students. To qualify for this award, students should have excellent grades and be also involved in some voluntary work within or outside the campus. This year, the prize is awarded to one of our graduates from the master program International Social Sciences. His story is rich. Tragic events, challenging times, happy turns mark his way. The tenth child of a traditional farmer's family in Burundi, whose father died when he was five, a civil war started when he was eight, and as a boy of 11, he fled to a refugee camp in a neighboring country, living there for three years alone without his family. Back home, as a teenager, he experienced how his house was rebuilt in the context of an ADRA development project. And here a pathway started, which I'm sure has not ended yet today. When he came to Friedensau, 18 years later, he had already a bachelor degree in business administration and economics, and has worked as a project manager in Burundi for development projects of ADRA Denmark. With his practical experience, he enriched the discussions in the classroom. At the same time, he was always eager to reflect critically on the way how things are done in the development aid. He studied diligent, learned fast, and did not hesitate to help and support his fellow students. He wrote his master's thesis about child protection in refugee camps. With data from youth who lived there, he demonstrated that he is able to reflect the involved concepts at an academic level and to discuss critically the current practices in his field. The DAD Prize 2022 is awarded to Charles Carrero. Charles cannot come on stage in person. He's already back home working, but I know that he's watching via internet. <laughs> Dear Charles, handshake and a hug for you.
With this prize, we honor the achievements and the work you have done. And we wish you all the best. And we have no doubt that your work will be a very valuable contribution wherever you are. Thanks a lot that you prepared a short video response. The stage is now yours. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good morning, bonjour, amahoro. Amahoro is a greeting in Kirundi, my mother tongue, which literally means peace. My name is Charles Carorero. I come from Burundi. I am married and I have two children. When in 2014 I graduated with a bachelor degree in finance and banking, I got a job as a finance officer in Adra, Burundi, where I worked for one year as finance officer and then moved to programs and I became a project manager, a position I held for four years until when uh, Adra Germany accepted to sponsor my studies at Finsa Adventist University by paying my down payment. Today, to be able to graduate, it's because of Friends Adventist University when, where I was able to see wonderful people, wonderful lecturers, wonderful leaders, where you can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship and meet, which will meet and talk about family, about other things that are not related to studies, which was not common to me to see that I can meet with the lecturer, rector and chancellor or lecturers and they discuss about different topics. It is an honor for me today to be among those who are graduating on this day. Today, as a winner of the prize of the DAAD, the German Academic Exchange Service, I would like to present my gratitude and appreciation to the organization and also to Frinza Adventist University, to the Friends of Frinza Association, and to Adra Germany, who supported me and enabled me to reach my goals. It was not done alone. It was a collaboration with my wonderful lecturers and uh, classmates that I was able to be one of those who are graduating today because those who supported me allowed me not only to study and to finish and graduate today, but also to be able to, get, to rejoin my family. Now I'm in Burundi, I'm with my family. After my studies, I got a job uh, with an Adventist organization named Farms to International, when, where I'm working today, overseeing the programs and finance in Africa namely in Uganda, South Sudan, uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. And very soon we are moving to Ethiopia and Sudan. All who supported me, my lecturers, my wonderful classmates, receive uh, this small speech as a presentation of my gratitude for having allowed me to achieve my goals of having made my stay in Frinsau to be fun and enjoyable. Thank you very much. Danke schön. Arbeit im Verborgenen ist schon fast ein Markenzeichen des Fördervereins is, uh, kind of a characteristic of the uh, Association of Friends of Friedensau. But for many students, this has become very important when it comes to financial support to reach your goal. The uh, association combines friends of Friedensau, supporters, sponsors, and give money to help uh, in financial needs or personal needs. It becomes visible on here, this place, and I don't know whether you know this, but perhaps uh, sometimes do good and uh, 
speak about it now. The DAAD price would not be possible without uh, Friedenzau. So I'm, I'm kind of in between, between uh, what uh, is coming and what is going to come is also connected to the Friends of Friedensau. And you're invited to support this association so that we support new students that they can reach their goal as well to accomplish something in this world and to enable a better life. That's the big aim that we have in our faculties of social work and theology. Next to the biographical talk, I was listening around. What can I say about the person that this prize is being awarded to for special uh, engagement in Friedensau. It's a person who is more in the background, but from the background puts a lot of time and energy into the social work, uh, the social life of Friedensau here among the students. So he can uh, empathize with other people and uh, is very active from his own initiative, had an open ear, an open door. Uh, he has been very proactive, uh, and visited all the student uh, homes, all the dormitories to find out what are the needs when it comes to the internet, which had been so difficult. Uh, things are improving, you know, but in those days, uh, sometimes just a cable was missing and he was taking care of uh, such details and uh, the university knows what we're talking about. He's a critical thinker and is very interested in what is happening in, uh, in the classes. And so it's a pleasure for me as a, as a, to present the prize to Emmanuel Fiarimandro. International Social Studies, Social Science. So this is what it looks like. And uh, all the best for your future way. And I'm glad to hear some words. And so this is for you as well. Dear guests, dear, dear honorable guests, dear teachers, dear friends and families, I am happy to be here and would like to thank God that I can stand here today. And I thank God that, that He has been with me so that I can uh, celebrate my joy with you and uh, also that I get this prize, this award. So I'm greeting you with Second uh, Corinthians 9.50. Let us thank God for his gift. Nobody can say how wonderful he is. So thank you to the uh, Friends of Friedensau that they have awarded me with this prize. And uh, it's not, it has not been easy to receive this prize for without people in the background who have supported me during my studies, it would not have been possible. So thanks be to God that many people were given to me that supported me. For uh, at times, uh, I looked a bit unnerved, but I feel like if something is in front of me, somebody has to go in between. And while I was here at Friedensau, I received a big gift to learn about myself and to 
stand up for other people. And as the rector said, everybody has a gift, but we don't know what to use the, uh, the present for. So I have a gift to work with people. He's referring to the sermon yesterday. If, if I can't thank with words or financially, but I can thank a person by doing something good to another pe person. So pass on the gift and the thanks. And so I would like to present that to you. If, if, if you have a gift from God, use it. Use it to help others to do something good. It may be as little as it may be, but it is very important for the person. And uh, let me uh, congratulate the other graduates today. And I would like to present a Bible verse for you that God is with us. So Psalm 32 verse 8, it says, God has promised us, I will lead you, uh, I will lead you and counsel you, I will not lose you, I will not lose you out of time. Thank you. are something special, especially when they come to, are connected with well-sounding names. Then the awarded person are put in one line with famous people, so they get closer to those famous people. And that's nice. For many years, the, the, uh, the Friedens Adventist University has been connected for many years with Waltraud and Herbert Blomstedt. They felt uh, closely connected through uh, uh, during the year of the um, football uh, World Cup. The maestro was, maestro was here. But they also had a foundation that they created for Friedensau. And I can give away three awards today. The first prize the, of the foundation, Herbert uh, Waltraud Blomstedt, is going to Ethel Zeppelin. Ethel was very busy in the field of music, not only in music, but the profile in music uh, is going back to old music and uh, newer music and very new music. And I say that without value, uh, putting value to the different styles. There is a step before. Before you get ill, there is stress uh, in life. If you had a, a, a rehearsal with each other, trying to, to start singing, you recognize how uh, de-stressing uh, music can be. So Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, be in the chapel. Here you can experience it live, what it means to relax and get off stress. Each year is full of excitement and temperament, but I'm glad that I can present this prize, this award to you. Let me use the time to say a few words of thanks. I would like to thank the uh, 
faculty that uh, was willing to choose me. But I would like to thank my parents as well, who are connected with us via the internet, who made a musical training possible for me. And, uh, I would like to thank my friends who have accompanied on my ways. And uh, I would like to thank Sebastian Kuhle, who has been supporting me in many ways and has challenged me to go new ways, to try new things and uh, to give expression to my passion. Thank you very much. When we discussed the Blomstedt Prize for Theology, the committee uh, could not decide on one person. We had two in line and we uh, decided to um, decided for both and both of them will get it thanks to the uh, Friends of Friedensheim to do to get that prize award in full. Yeah. People who already work as pastors but when they were here at Friedensau, uh, they have been active in many, many ways. And that's the aim of the Herbert and Waltraud Blod Blomstedt Prize. Uh, it's about excellence in theology, in music, in other areas. So I would like to call Christian Men. something very special, it, it would be your master's thesis. But that is, it is not alone. The master's thesis about worship with people suffering from dementia. And that will be an important issue in the future more and more. But beyond that, he had been active in, uh, in, in his studies and there really was a student who was so was, so was in and before his time, even in advance. Uh, reading for one semester was done with uh, two within two weeks' time. That was something very unusual. Uh, and Christian also uh, was engaged, engaged in many ways in the Adventist Church here. And there's something that you named the Mount Irene. <laughs> That's not uh, rubbish, but it is. It's the rest of uh, the lake where we have a little mountain, and he chose a name that is connected with Friedensau. Friedensau, Friedensthal, Friedensau. And uh, Mount Irene means a mountain of peace. So it is a joy to present this prize to you. whether I should say something. didn't have an answer, but here I, I didn't write anything down. Perhaps it is in the characteristic of theology that if you, if you do something, you don't feel special about it. So it is not a prize for me as such, but, but more for Jenny, because my wife, because these five years without here, I, I wouldn't have, without her, I wouldn't have been able to do all this uh, at the same time. So thank you. After one year, dear graduates, one thing I became aware of, the cultural shock comes quickly. And this is just the starting point for you today to who knows when and where. So it was uh, an issue for me to have some 
some books available, and I can't go to the library anymore. So I wish you, all of you, that we are aware of our calling, that we live our calling that brought us to Friedensau, um, that we take Friedensau to wherever we go. So I wish you all the best. And thank you to the faculty for this prize. And uh, I'm so glad to be back as an alumni to this campus. The second uh, prize goes for theology. It's going to Philip Nern in absentia. I'm not sure whether he is here. Meantime, Philip cannot be here. And similar to Christian, Philip and his wife deserve the prize together, if you want, uh, because they both were very, very busy in Friedensau and got involved. We recognize especially his master's thesis, which is interconnected in the whole program. For both have understood for what Friedensau stands for, the holistic education. And they've left their sources in theology and research, but also on campus and in the Adventist church. Philip wrote a master's thesis about um, enjoyment in the Bible, and that sounds unusual at first. Pleasure and enjoyment, genus. Something has been created here where our view is enlarged, our horizon is enlarged, and I wish we, we, we do not narrow our fields too much, uh, our fields of expertise, but that we are encouraged to go further, to go one step further. And both of them have done that and are an example for all of us. So in absentia, I can present this prize if Philip is seeing this well if possible this prize is for you congratulations thank you very much for the laudators of, and presenters, and congratulations to those receiving the awards. Now I would like to pass on a few words to you as graduates and friends. And first of all, we would like to listen to Fried Bert Hartmann for the uh, Seventh Adventist Church. He's representing the board of our church. He's a representative of our church in Germany, and he has been the vice president of our church for many years. After that, uh, there's a word from the university. Dr. Annette Witherspoon will give a, a short word, and the Stura will give uh, a word of thanks by Katrin Taraba. First of all, Mr. Hartmann, Pastor Hartmann. Dear Roland, Director, dear team from the university, dear graduates, dear uh, friends, the congregation, uh, my two presidents, when I asked them, what am I supposed to present to the church? They gave me two things. First of all, congratulate, congratulate, congratulate those who have gotten his uh, award. And secondly, we are behind the university for 100%, for more than 100%. And I would like to say that very clearly without going into detail here. When we sat here and uh, when we looked at the eyes of those who received the awards, the diplomas, 
It was such a beaming, such a joy. You managed, you have done it. And you could see it, the joy, and the, the pride in your eyes. You have done it. You have, you have managed this big piece in your life. So we celebrate your success. And I'm very glad that I can be here, coming here from Hanover to celebrate with you. My name is Friedbert Hartmann and I'm alumnus of this school with lots of thankfulness and lots of pride. I've studied in the same rooms where you learned and studied. I have had my exams in the same rooms where you were examined. I had the same worries and concerns at the end whether my um, work was sufficient so as to get my diploma. So I know all this. And we stood in this room in the chapel when we got our diploma was a diploma in those days with Greek and Hebrew uh, with the knowledge what belongs to a good sermon with the knowledge of church history and dogmatics we went out and if one of one of the uh, speakers talked about the culture shock Yes, as a pastor, I came into church work as you will, if you studied theology or go to some social area. And I went into my professional life with lots of joy and pleasure. I was so well prepared, I was excited to get into the job. With my diploma in my hand, I, I felt excited and longing about my profession. I was really uh, excited about it. I was pastor. I was in a church district for six years. I was responsible for the local churches. Then six years I have been for the Adventist youth in our church, in a conference of the church. And then I've been, for 14 years, I've been for the Adventist youth at the German level, Germany level. So I was in the South German Union and worked there. Then I've been 15 years a secretary, so administrative leader and vice president of our church uh, for uh, Germany, the Union, in Hanover. And each of these places, the excitement and the pleasure, the joy remained. The calling remained. The curiosity this joy was my personal freedom with which I could serve in my ministry. And this was awakened by teachers of Friedensau, people I had to deal with uh, within the church and outside of the church. It was kept awake. A joy, a pleasure that ultimately has been given to me by God Himself. And now, in 15 days, I will retire, and I'm looking forward to it with pleasure. And perhaps you have that kind of pleasure as well, but it may be a bit longer for you. And that may be the difference between me as an alumni and you who have just graduated. But as someone who has gone the way, who is standing before you now, let me say that the way is good. The way is very good. Every place that is before you has so many good things in it. You've gotten skills, you've gotten abilities that will make you successful, with which you will be able to grow further. 
don't be disturbed by crises. There always is an after, a day after. There's a way out of the crisis and there's a way of life after the crisis. Follow your calling and your excitement. You will be a blessing, I'm sure about that. You will be a blessing. You've gotten your graduation, and I would like to congratulate you in the name of the Seventh day Adventist Church in Germany with all my heart, with all respect for your uh, achievement. Congratulations. You will be a blessing. State representatives present, representatives from the Seventh-day Adventist Church who are here, the rector, chancellor, deans, um, fellow faculty and staff of Friedensau, honored guests, families, and well-wishers, dear graduates, I will just add my voice to the messages that have come from the, from the speakers before me. On behalf of Friedensau Adventist University, I say a hearty congratulations. <laughs> Completing your degree, and uh, you have all demonstrated great courage and dedication, and you have earned your, the right to be exceptionally proud of yourselves today. So I want to see you smile until the last job and teeth, as we say, is showing. We, the faculty and staff of the university, share in your joy. It is our hope that your time here at Friedensau had pre have prepared you for service, both in your academic, professional fields, but beyond that, uh, in service to humanity, for this is where true success lies. For some of you, the path of ahead is secure. For, other, for others of you, it is still work in progress. However, for all of you, I have no doubt that you possess the academic, professional, and personal competences to succeed professionally. In your home countries, abroad, or for you foreign students, if you so choose here in Germany. Those before you are striving, and you will too. Professor Spiegler and Isaac I.J. Uh, completed a survey with alumni of the Faculty of Social Sciences from the period 2016 to 2019. The study showed that about 80% of the graduates found jobs after their studies. So you have hope. 67% had found first jobs related to the studies. Over 70% were happy with their first job placement, with professional satisfaction increasing over time for both German and English program graduates. There is no fixed pattern or limits to what you can do with the, de de the degrees you now have. From my own experience, I can promise you your lives and careers are likely to take you to places you cannot currently imagine. At some of those places, you may feel unprepared. However, I urge you, do not doubt yourselves. You are equipped. For the saying goes, the credit belongs to those who strive relentlessly, who make mistakes, come up short, but who actually strive to do the deeds and spend themselves in worthy causes. And who are the worst if they fail, at least failed daring greatly. These are words I'm paraphrasing from Theodore Roosevelt. Thus, we encourage you to use the courage, the knowledge, sorry, the skills, the relationships, the experiences, 
that you encountered here, at your, uh, here in Friensau in ways that positively shape the spaces you will inhibit. And you would have achieved success, however different one from another. For success itself is interactional. It is not a collection of things, but rather a network of processes. If we should borrow the language from classic game theory, we say winners in the long run are those who collaborate. What this means is success comes thanks to the interactions with which you are involved. The more we focus on self, the less successful we are. The more we focus on others, the more successful we become. Hence, at Friedensau, the goal was to provide you the wholesome education that propels you towards selfless service for the well-being of others. For we believe it is only through selfless service that true achievements of success can be realized. We wish that you will always remember the values behind your knowledge and competences and use it in a worthy cause. What is that worthy cause? In service to God and humanity. Lifting up the weak, defending the powerless, advocating for understanding and caution for the undeserving, being a bacon of hope to the hopeless, a breath of fresh air to those suffocating on the burdens of lack, an inspiration a challenger of injustice and bigotry, showing meekness where strife and violence abound, being the voice of sound judgment in the midst of irrationalities, and showing a balanced character in the midst of conceit. Mary Jean McLeod Bethany was a daughter of former slaves in the US. She is remembered today as one of those important black educators, civil and women's rights leaders of the 20th century. In 1904, she opened the Dayton Literary and Industrial Training Institute for Black Girls in the US. This year, on July 13, Bethany became the first African American to be represented with a state statute in the National Statutory Hall collection at the U.S. Capitol. She died in 1955. And in her last will and testament, she wrote a few words that I want to leave with you. I leave you to hope. I leave you to love. I leave you to challenge of becoming confident in yourselves. I leave you a thirst for learning. I leave you respect for the use of power. I leave you a desire to live harmoniously with your fellow humans. I leave you a responsibility to those coming after you. I challenge you to go and serve humanity. Herzlichen Glückwunsch, liebe Absolventen, Absolventen. May the good Lord order your steps and enlarge your territory of influence in your service to God and humanity. Thank you. students and uh, those who remain students. In the name of the Stura, I have the privilege and honor to congratulate you from all my heart and to present you with some gifts. Traditionally, there is a speech of about five minutes. I was advised to keep it shorter. I have to talk a little bit faster. Sorry about that, for dear translator. Well, I would be able to, but you wouldn't be able to stand it. As most of you know, I've been at Friedensau for many years, 
I've seen many graduation service responses of students. I've seen people come and go, and I could observe a lot and uh, find out a lot for myself. What unifies all of us. Wherever you come from, how old you are, what gender you have, whatever culture you come from, you all are united by the fact you develop. Friedenshaar helps to develop friendships through friendship uh, in classes. New uh, ideas are being developed. And what I can see especially here, for the first time there is an opportunity to experience freedom. For many of us, the freedom of a private uh, room without parents watching you, no culture that may repress or oppress something, or no church that looks whether you are on time every Sabbath at 9.30 in worship service. You can do what you want to do, but with this freedom comes responsibility. Responsibility for yourself and for your fellow being. And the measure between responsibility and freedom, to find a balance there is difficult. It is individual, it is a mature process of maturity, and it can take a while. Yes, I've na mentioned a few examples, and it's about all areas of life. For many, there are crises of faith that you have to find a way through. Others change their morals or their worldview. All this is normal. This is time of becoming an adult. Friedensau helps you in many, many ways in this process, in this process of maturing. And this is how some feel insecure because of this freedom, that they hold on to old rules to have some grip, and they may seem a bit weird and strong, and while others enjoy their new freedom and try things, and try everything. And yes, uh, Friedensau is not a good world, a happy world. Some things just are hidden, and other things are being talked about. Well, it is normal to fall into such extremes, but important it is to find a balance in the long run. And this is where Friedensau is helping you, the classes, the friendships, the people who teach you, the workers here, all this helps to mature more and more and find our own standpoint. And dear graduates, I hope and I wish that all of you have had this kind of a development while here at Friedensau, that you found a way for yourself. I wish that, and I wish you, for you, that you are clear with yourself uh, at peace with yourself between freedom and responsibility. I wish you with all my heart that you hold on to your values, the values that you have seen as important for yourself. Our present to you is supposed to remind you to be clear with yourself, with a clean conscience, not to go into extremes. So you will get this wonderful wash bag and it's connected with best wishes. Stay clean. So thank you very much for these words that are given to the graduates and now towards the end of our program. The students have an opportunity to reflect and give a response. 
with their experiences over a longer or shorter period with what they would like to tell us as a university that they would like to give to our way. So two people will talk who just have been up here will give a little response. First of all, it is uh, a graduate of music therapy, Claudia Sokolis-Bottmann, and then you have a Master of Arts in Theological Studies, John Opecchi. Corona has broken out in Friedensau. Andreas is sitting in an emergency meeting again. There will be no classes in presence for the time being. That's what I wrote in my diary on October 19, 2020. It was a Monday. The following week, my second block week, should have started. The summer before, a new course of action began for me, enjoying substance in my work and despite the pandemic, I and we as a couple were moved by the question whether I should study music therapy in addition to my master's degree in theology and my training in music and movement ed uh, education. When, if not now, the university community Dear friends from all over the world, thankful was everybody in October uh, 2020 when we were op opened in presence in the sitting in the arena and our rector Roland Fischer preached about 1 Kings 3. You have the choice, he emphasized, and encouraged to follow the values in our own life. Studying part-time as a career changer is challenging, but I'm enriched by the experience. Dealing with variables in daily life of the university and the department in pandemic times was not always easy. In my professional environment, tolerance of ambiguity was a word that became more prominent in recent years. Also, an attitude to always face the uncertainty in everyday pandemic life. Resilience also became a required parameter. Flexibility, frustration, tolerance, creativity, improvisation, and especially improvisation is something we know in music therapy. Over the two years, there was input that enriched as well as challenges as a crisis situation, not only in my studies, also in everyday life, work, family, society. Yet Roland's words resonated many a time. You have the choice, and I had a choice, and I became another. Studying changed me. I'm grateful for that, for the growing and becoming. I had the choice to go my way to shape my studies to use my resources to get advice and help where needed it, to ask questions, to make decisions, and today to accept my diploma with gratitude, even if I would have wished for a different response in places or any response at all. Looking back on my studies, I'm very grateful for three things, grounding, breadth, and wholeness. Grounding. As a humanities major coming from theology, I have had to say goodbye to footnotes in my papers and learn to write differently, but have gained insights into statistics and empirical research methods. I'm grateful for constructive comments and on my work and books that show that statistics can be beautifully simple. Reference to a book by Thomas Spiegler. It gives creative people like me, grounding. Breadth, I had the opportunity to study qualitative research methods with the ISS course, which I don't take for granted. Here I was given a different perspective. In the interaction it became clear how different we are at Friedensau. In addition to the diversity of research methods and cultures, it also became clear that it makes a difference 
whether students live on campus, study full-time, or join externally. Where diversity is lived, it creates breadth. Thank you for that. Wholeness. With the decision uh, from Ignatius of Loyola uh, comes a statement. It is not much knowing that satiates and satisfies the soul, but the sensing and tasting of things from within. My studies was enriched by exchange with lectures, fellow students, internships, supervisors, interview partners, and much literature. It was essential to also take time for silence and reflection, to let it resonate. And if there's one thing I've learned to value and implement more intensely in my studies, it is the value to live with the ability to resonate and to be on the move in an interdisciplinary way with all senses in wholeness. As of today, I'm an alumna of this university and look forward to explaining, deepening and passing on my knowledge in theory and practice with everything that belongs to me as a person. Thank you for allowing me to continue learning, maturing, growing here, and for challenging and encouraging me, each in your own way. Thank you for all the encouragement and perseverance, your improvisation and search for ways and possibilities in the last two and a half years of Corona. My prayer is that God will bless you and your service at this university so that Friedensau will be a blessing to others as well. I have synopsized my experience in four parts, and they are short. The first one is personal. My personal experience here at Frinsau has been life-changing. I came with a bachelor's degree in theology, and today I have a master's degree in theology. That's life-changing for me. But as I fine-tuned my speech last night, I had to ask myself a very frank question. What has changed about me? And I realized that Frinsau has not left me the same way I came. I no longer see the world from the parochial prism of my culture and worldview. Having a first-hand feel of the crossing of worldviews, I have become more sympathetic and open to other worldviews especially to those who do not think like me. And I would suggest that for those who seem hostile and unfriendly and sometimes xenophobic, it could be that they need to take a trip abroad and learn a new culture, a new language, and learn to live with new neighbors, maybe this way, things can become better. Academic experience. When I arrived here, I wasn't prepared for the switch in method, academic method for that. Because I came from a background where I was taught what to say and how to say it. But here, I have been taught to think about what to say and decide how to say it. And that, for me, has been life-changing also. And this method, I, I would say, has transformed me. It has transformed my reading and my writing. And for those who have interest in coming to Frinsau, this is the best bargain you can ever think of. I want to pay um, special uh, um, thanks to my professors and the ones who read my thesis, professors um, Rofpula and Stefan, they pushed me to reappraise my positions, yet they helped me in streamlining my findings and convictions. 
And in the course of my study here, I wrote eight module papers. And for some students, that would be many. And that meant spending many hours in the library. But the, these hours were the defining moment of my study here. And I would suggest to the new students, those who, who hope for a transformation of their academic deficiencies, you have to be in the library. You have to study more than you work, because that is why you are here. You must persevere, for academic victory does not usually go to the most skilled, but those who are most persistent. The third experience was community. Coming from a very communal background to Europe, I, I thought I was going to be lost in the crowd. But Frinsau presented a city of refuge for me. In this place, you find love and acceptance. You find assurance, and you find support. So I want to say thanks to the leaders of the school, the rector, the chancellor, the teachers, for providing us with um, this very wonderful place to learn and, and uh, work. I also want to thank um, the proprietors of the House of Hope, where I lived for two years while I, wrote, while I did my studies in, in the MTS program. Special thanks go to Alina, Hannah Lore, and Stefan. I also want to thank Milana and, um, and um, the husband, Igo, <laughs> for the wonderful gift of food you would always bring to the, to the House of Hope. Thank you. I also thank um, Laszlo and the wife for their support while we stayed at the now defunct House of Hope. We were the last ones to live there, and it was really a nice place. I have also worked with many persons here, especially Raul Cervantes, Dr. Kirsten Maivard. Thank you for teaching me the values of diligence and thoroughness. And to the new students, I would say that this is your new home. Do not be an absentee community member. Let your presence be an enriching one so that when your time here is up, you will be greatly missed. Spiritual experience. Having worked as a pastor in Nigeria before coming, it was hard to readjust to being a member in the pew. But this readjustment was the touchstone for rediscovering my spiritual needs. I had to sit back and realize that I don't have to read the Bible because I'm paid as a pastor. I don't have to go to church because I have to as a pastor. So the time here has been very enriching. And I would also encourage those who do not have time uh, to be at these programs that you're missing a lot. We have a lot here for you. And while you study, while you go to class, you can also take time to rest. And I think there is no better way to do that than to be part of our Sabbath worship every Saturday. A time to pause and to take, and to take a step back to consider what you have done in the week. Finally, I would like to say that our greatest fear should not be of failure but of succeeding at things that don't really matter. It was Winston Churchill who said that success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. And again to the new student, planning your time here is not enough. You need to time your plan. You need to begin to think of the exit plan because before you know it, the two years of your study are over. Now is the time to begin to think of what's next. Thank you for listening to my experience here in Frinsau. But let me say, your life must not be influenced by your experiences, but by your expectations. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Claudia and John, for these impressive words you found. It has been said many times in these two hours that we have a Christian faith, a Christian uh, belief in God, and that's why it is appropriate to worship God together in an old hymn that you can find on your programs. The hymn, Holy God, we praise Thee. We praise your name. So let's sing together this song. And after that, we will have a benediction by our chaplain, Dietmar Dost. And I invite you to stand for the hymn and for the prayer. Putting your masks on, please. Unser großer Gott, wir wollen innehalten in diesem Moment und dir herzlich danken. Wir danken dir sehr für die jetzigen Graduanten, für unsere neuen Alumni. Danke für die wertvollen Persönlichkeiten, die wir kennenlernen konnten. Danke für die Erfahrungen, die wir zusammen haben, die Gespräche, die Konversationen. That were challenging, that were helping us, leading us on. Thank you for the strength that you have given to them to persevere when it became difficult. Thank you that they have reached their goal. Thank you for the valleys that they had to go through as well and went through because that helped to mature and to move on that things could change to the better. 
in life. Wir bitten dich her, Lord, we ask you for your blessing on them. Wenn sie ihren Weg jetzt weitergehen, as they continue their work, those who continue to study, give them the excitement to learn new things and to discover new things. Those who go into a professional life, give them courage for their new start. Let all of them be a blessing for their surroundings. In this challenging time in which we are, help them to live hope. Being connected with you, give them the strength to be there for other people. Thus we ask for each individual, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may look at you in a friendly manner and be gracious unto you. The Lord may lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Now our graduation ceremony is finished, but we still have the opportunity to stay together and have conversations. There is the obligatory photo uh, appointment, so please come outside in front of the William Michael House. So this will be immediately now. So all of you who want to take uh, to be taking a picture of, please come quickly. And we have a little reception. So with a little drink, we can have conversations. So all of you are invited for that again in front of William Michael House. So if you can stay, and for those who need to go, I would like to say thank you that you have been here and all the best. See you again.